in the war against major crime. There's a new team of officers out on patrol. Handpicked, their task to tackle the most hardened criminals. Get on the floor now! Meet the Sentinels. I want to catch bad guys. I want to get in people's faces. Accept nothing, believe no one, and challenge everything. The latest police tactics revealed for the first time. They drive the fastest police cars on the road. We are left, left, left. Wrist is high. It's crashed, it's crashed. Decamp. It's gone down! They use targeted live criminal intelligence. It's a black Bentley Continental. With the help of an all-seeing matrix of cameras. It should be hitting them within the next 60 seconds. Open the window! Oh, you're going to smash! Open the window! The result? Criminals face overwhelming force. We're going to make life as difficult for them as we absolutely can, again and again and again. The most wanted hunted down. Yeah, whoever it was, he floored it. In a deadly game of cat and mouse. Be advised, he's violent. Don't stop. Listen, I don't give a He's got warning signals for weapons. This vehicle is possibly involved in human trafficking. Open the door! These are the Sentinels. This is where the excitement really starts to build up. And this is Fast Justice. Coming up, a dramatic stop on one of Suffolk's busiest roads. Right there! Control, from A2, we've got all occupants within the vehicle secured, but we're in a terrible location on the slip. A terrible excuse for carrying a weapon. I, I've been studying at the college. You can't carry things in the car for self-defense. When you need it, you can take it up. What? Yes. Is that a serious question? And a first arrest for the Sentinel's newest recruit. The time is now 2.26. OK, I'm arresting you on suspicion of driving with excess drugs in your system. Ipswich in Suffolk. Here, one of three Sentinel teams in the county are starting a shift. Got some cake for you all. Very exciting. Mrs Moon's been at it again. Sergeant Mike Moon knows how to motivate his squad. This is sticky Jamaican ginger cake. Sophie? I'm quite all right. Come on, you. you know you can. <laughs> when we're downtime in the office and we're just doing our admin, our paperwork and research, there's a nice morale, there's a nice buzz in the office. We all get on, we have a laugh. Do you want a um, napkin, Daniel, or are you, are you just going to drop the crumbs on the floor? But then out on the roads, when we are having to think tactically um, and go about our core business, you know, I think everybody is on the same wavelength. Mm. Elevens is over. Sergeant Moon takes up his place on control. 8-4, control. 8-4, go ahead. For the next 10 hours, he's monitoring ANPR activations of suspected criminal cars while his team of elite drivers patrols the Ipswich roads. It isn't long before the Sarge gets a hit. We've got an activation. Silver Mercedes Vito van. 82, got that. The Sentinels believe the van is linked to County Line's drug dealing, and it's heading towards Dan and Sophie in car 82 along the A12 towards London. Just been made aware of a silver Mercedes Vito van that's potentially involved in drug supply. So we're just going to make grounds, try and intercept that vehicle now. The vehicle is making a beeline for Essex. 8-2 need to get there before it slips out of their area. Drivers on the Sentinel team are trained to make up time in a hurry and have turbocharged cars with which to do it. I think maybe uh, uh, we're here before or after it. There, maybe. They've spotted the van and just in time. 82, got that vehicle. It's committed A12 southbound towards Colchester. Appears to have at least one other occupant aside from the driver. The suspect vehicle appears to be a taxi. What are they doing? All over the road. Mm. But with a link to County Line's drug dealing, it might be carrying more than paying passengers. I think we need to get up through this traffic. Car 83 with Sentinel's Georgia Mufti is also on the A12 behind car 82 and rushing to catch up. We are lane two, we can see you up ahead. We'll take it here, they'll just have to 
bump past. The plan is for A3 to pull ahead and box the taxi in, forcing it to follow. If uh, you'll keep the eyeball, we'll go past. Oh, here we go. Going off here? Yeah. A2, um, we're looking to take it off here. But as George and Mufti get in front... Just keep an eye on the mirrors. Keep going. The taxi doesn't follow. It comes to a stop. Right there! Right there! The driver has pulled over on the side of the busy dual carriageway. Now the Sentinels are just inches from 70 mile per hour traffic. The risk level just goes through the roof, and ideally, we don't want to be stopping any vehicle in a dual carriageway. We don't have to. Obviously, if we need to, we will. Stay where you are. At this moment in time, being detained for purposes of Section 23, Misuse of Drugs Act, sir. It's all right, information involving drugs, by. Have you got anything on you you shouldn't have? Anything that's going to harm us? Any weapons? Any sharps? There's one passenger inside, but the Sentinels don't want to risk anything by searching him here. Control from A2, we've got all occupants within the vehicle secured, but we're in a terrible location on the slip. Roger that. Um, is the safest option for one officer to enter the taxi cab, if that's feasible, and escort it away from the slip? Yes, yes, I think so. Over to you. It sounds like they've stopped in a dangerous position. Far from ideal. Fast road. Um, so we'll probably put two police officers into the taxi and uh, control the occupants somehow and then escort the vehicle on. Right. These two sit in the back with an officer, keeping eyes on both of them. Someone drives this and then we move our cars. The Sentinels must get themselves and the suspects off the dual carriageway as fast as possible. Straight over it towards Colchester, find a garage. On the industrial, yeah. And we'll just all follow in convoy, all right? All right. Fast roads are the number one place where police officers get killed in the UK, so we have to be very wary. Ideally, we don't want vehicles to come to a stop on the main road. We want to escort them off. Um, but I think in this case, which happens sometimes, drivers just stop straight away wherever we put the lights on. Away from the A12, the driver is putting cuffs and asks some questions. Has this gentleman got any ID with him? Um, I haven't, but um, I've got a few tattoos which you've probably known me by. You have a driving licence, yeah? Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. So what do you do for a living? I'm a, I'm a cab driver. Oh. The man in the back of the cab isn't saying much. Yeah, don't walk with me. But Sergeant Moon is feeding the team with information about him. Yeah. He is known on PNC. Warning, weapons, escaper, ailment, drugs. Last arrested, possession with intent to supply, Class A. Consider strip search. The Sentinels have already cuffed the man before searching him. Have you got anything in your pockets? Nothing's going to hurt me. Have you got like a phone or a wallet or anything like that? Fine. Phone. Phone's in that one, okay. What's in the main bit? Another phone, some keys, some cigarettes. Two more phones. If they've got multiple phones, more than likely one of them will probably be their personal phone, and then they'll have the line phone or like their supply phone. It starts going in the back of your mind, so yes, this person is more likely involved in the supply of drugs. Now Sentinel car 84 is on the scene. Officer John Wood will search the taxi for drugs or evidence of organised dealing. Hello, how you doing? Along with local plainclothes officers from another unit. So if you're happy in Woods, any phones, Mooney says we want seized, but we're not going to worry about forensics. Or forensics. Where, um, where have you done? Where do you want to search? Just we like haven't that, really right? started at all, so yeah, that side would be great. Searching doesn't reveal any drugs. The, there's a Nokia in here, which he says is his, <laughs> that keeps ringing. But they do make crucial discoveries. That's his mum's, the driver's mum's. Okay. So we'll take that as well. You're at eight, you're at eight. In total, the cab contained a startling amount of evidence. We've found five mobile phones in the front of the, um, the cab, which is... I haven't got five mobile phones, so I'm not sure why he has. Uh, quite often, mobile phones will be the key to unlocking what's going on. So we'll get these, we'll download them, find out if there's anything in relation to uh, drugs intel or supply on them. Cold, isn't it? The search then moves on to the passenger's bag. See that? Back to the bag. I'm going to see how much cash you've got in your bag. 
they've discovered a large wad of cash. I don't know how many pennies are in there as well, you know. You've counted them all. I've counted them. They go deep. Hey, three got that. He's um, he's got over three hundred pounds in his bag. Um, I think um, if he's got that in his bag, um, he gets lifted. The taxi passenger is arrested, and the Sentinel's intelligence has allowed them to stay one step ahead of this potential dealer. So you were originally detained for a, a drug search under Section 23 of the Misuse of Drugs Act. That's now led to your arrest on suspicion of being concerned in the supply of drugs. Taxis are used quite commonly, actually. They'll come in on like a train and then use a taxi to then move around because then we can't tie them to a vehicle. It's, yeah, it's probably a more clever tactic. With the passenger in the back of a police car, Sophie's focusing on the driver. So what's the, what's the plan? What's the plan? What's the plan? Yeah, you tell me, all the well, passenger, so. Well, obviously, we need to search you. Before the search, due to the intelligence on the car, the Sentinels decide to carry out a roadside drug test on the driver. All right, so you put this hung out for me. Thank you. This test takes eight minutes to give us a result, all right? Part of the requirement is you remain with us for the whole of the time. All right, it's 13.10 by my watch, so 13.18, we'll have a result for you. When was the last time you used control drugs? Um, I, don't, I don't do drugs, mate. But in eight minutes, this taxi driver's livelihood could be in the balance. I um, tested positive for cocaine. Okay. All right. So at this moment in time, I'm arresting you on suspicion of driving a motor vehicle whilst exceeding the specified limits for a specified drug. The taxi will stay put whilst its driver comes in for a blood test. Keep your hands where we can see them at all times. At the time of filming, investigations are still underway into the passenger. The driver failed to provide a blood sample once in custody and was charged accordingly. Using a cab to potentially move drugs is a way of hiding in plain sight. But dogged detective work has put a stop to this suspected drug dealing taxi and shown that nothing slips past the Sentinels. Drug dealers will always change their tax and use different you know, methods to go undetected. But ultimately, if that information intelligence is coming in, then they're going to get caught out somewhere down the line. Switch Town Centre after dark. Tonight, Mufti and Dan are in car 82, and they've spotted car 83 up ahead. Here they are. Huh. Well done for blowing it out. They can't resist giving their colleagues some grief about their rear flashing lights or fend offs. Can they turn those fend offs off? Would you mind turning your fend offs off when you get the chance? Suddenly, their friendly oh, chat is interrupted. Very Attention. Their in-car AMPR system has picked up a target vehicle as it drove past. Oh, what's this? Thanks yeah. a lot. Where's that? It's just two up. Oh, okay. Their onboard computer gives them instant information on the car. Arrested for three other males. We're going quick found in compound of Balaclava's gloves, angle grinding, etc. Here we go. He's doing one. Tonight, Sam Chittuck is on control. He has an urgent warning about what was discovered when a property linked to the car was searched. See that just um, for officer safety, obviously, um, Section 18 is conducted after the group's arrest. Um, Some firearms were discovered just for your info and safety. That's received. Dan and Mufti stay in pursuit. And Sam's intel check reveals the car is connected to some serious offenders. There was four males last week arrested for burglary. They were caught at a compound having kind of angle grinded their way in. Found at the scene with balaclavas, tools, stolen property, etc. This is a vehicle linked to one of the males. With the possibility of weapons on board the target car, Dan shadows it until he and Mufti can get back up. Don't want to join us? Fortunately, car 81 was nearby when the call went out. <laughs> we will be. Now there are two sentinel cars behind the suspects. Who clocked them? The target car seems to be compliant and pulls over. Oh, what's he stuck here for? Well, I'll have to go and deal with him. But then... Uh, hello. Hello. Get up. Hello. Off we go. What's 
he doing? Is he drunk? And now there's no escape, as Sophie and Woody block him in. What, have you got your ID on you, please? Driving license. You've got no ID on you? No. Nothing has happened, it's just a routine check. Um, we need to check out your driving license, insurance, etc. But unfortunately, you can't produce to me a driving license, which is a pain. Is this one of the men who was previously arrested for burglary? Without ID, it's tricky to confirm. How can I say that you're the person you're saying you are? You've got no ID. Warm. Warm. Do you have a photo of your driving license? He has it, don't wait. OK, but I just can't take your word for it. The driver's being evasive about his ID, but Sophie and Mufti are digging into the passenger's backstory. We've got um, that vehicle stopped. Can I just pass you passenger details, please? Sam is searching police databases, so the team on the ground are able to get crucial information fast. So that Mufti, um, your male, um, looks like he is known. He's known only for immigration offences in 2017. It looks as though he came to this country and posed as a child, despite looking to be kind of in his mid-20s. Then Dan gets the driver's real name, and Control has his history too. Receive that. Um, he's known on PNC, no warning markers. Arrested 2016 for refused or neglected to produce a document when required. I assume it's in relation to immigration offence, potentially. Um, and he was arrested on the 20th of this month, so six days ago, um, for that burglary and going equipped. Found in the compound. But on that day, he gave different details, so he wasn't any trace of us. Step out of the vehicle, please. Thank you. The link to burglary now established. Dan must search the car for evidence. You're going to be detained for a Section 1 Police and Criminal Evidence Act search. Knowing about the link to weapons, Dan has to tread cautiously. Have you got anything on you you shouldn't have? No. Any weapons? No. Why is it funny? Because I have no weapon. What are you talking about? But I don't understand why you'd be laughing. You're being detained for a search where I'm asking you questions about if you've got any weapons. And you're laughing. It's not a laughing matter, is it? Would you mind searching this chap? I don't mind. Thanks, John. You're welcome, Daniel. You just don't know what goes through these people's minds and, and what they're thinking. Whether he was trying to laugh to put doubt in our minds that, oh, OK, maybe we're going down the wrong route, or he wouldn't be so confident if there is items, you know, that maybe there is nothing in the car, because he's quite confident that there isn't. Who knows? But obviously, he was proven wrong. <laughs> Muffy? Hey, yeah, Dan. Is that an Uncle Dusty's? Oh, right, great. Where's that? In the driver's door oh. pocket. OK. It's more common nowadays that um, we're finding weapons, knives, knuckle dusters in vehicles that are ready to hand and um, available to use if they need to use them. So it's 1717. At this time, I'm arresting you on suspicion of possession of an offensive weapon in a public place. Okay. Control from 82. Go ahead, 82. Set of knuckle dusters in the driver's door pocket, so um, the driver's been arrested. Great work, thank you. Well, I, I've been studying at the college. You can't carry things in the car for self-defense. When you need it, you can take it out. The passenger seems to think he can score the Sentinels on the law. What? Yes. Is that a serious question? Yes, that is. So you can carry items for self-defense, and if you need yeah, them, you can for, take them out. In the car, or That's even, a serious even, question. Yeah. Is that... So if it's in where he can reach it yeah. and he can use it, then it's an offense. OK, but it's in the car. It's not. No, in it's in his driver's door pocket. He was advised by someone that he was able to carry weapons for his personal protection if it was to be used in self-defense. Absolutely no idea who would tell anyone that. And they're obviously quite easily in reach for the driver, so he's been arrested uh, on suspicion of possession of an offensive weapon. As the search continues, Sophie makes an unlikely discovery in the boot. It's picnic, picnic picnics. Yeah. Do you like picnics? Sometimes we go on weekends. Where do you go picnicking? It's up in water. All oh, right, nice. Somewhere around. Just the two of you? Sometimes, sometimes three, sometimes four. Is this your picnic rug? That's the picnic blanket. There it is. Not giving up, Sophie makes an interesting yet confusing find in the car. That's a um, blocker, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Bearing in mind what they've been arrested for previously. 
Going to quit. Going to quit. Yeah, it could be going to quit. French can it? Could be. They've found a small electrical device that it seems has a range of uses. Now, these are used quite commonly to fraud sort of black box insurances, so it will jam a signal between the black box and the vehicles. They're also used um, with it, sort of the organised crime world and criminals for um, blocking trackers on stolen vehicles um, and any plant or agricultural machinery that may have trackers within them. Uh, control from 8-2, do you receive? This is such an unusual find that Dan needs to check the offences that could be being committed. Would you mind just looking at the legislation into that again, please, and see what offences we might be looking at? Received. I'm not sure um, whether it's just, like, insurance fraud or something like that, maybe? Received. Well, it's now 17.30. You're going to be further arrested on suspicion of um, possession of an item to commit fraud with. Woody, do you mind taking these cuffs off for it, please? No, OK. I don't, I don't mind at all. The passenger is free to go, but the driver's coming in. Right, you're going to sit in there, my friend? <coughs> While his car is parked safely, he's in the back of the Sentinel's BMW and already pleading his innocence. It wasn't on me, it was on my car. OK. I like I keep saying to you, you are under caution and um, you just need to wait for your interview and then you can give us a full account about what's happened tonight. Until then, we can go back talking about picnics, if you like. The driver was later charged with possession of an offensive weapon. Oh, this is not picnic weather. No further action was taken over the fraud suspicion. <laughs> 45 miles northeast of Ipswich, another Sentinel team is starting a shift. They have a combined experience of more than 100 years of policing. And their newest recruit is PC Jess Collison. How long have you been in the police, Jess? Uh, just over two and a half years. What year did you join? Uh, 2018. OK. 2018? Yeah. How many years you got left? <laughs> 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 oh. I don't want to be depressed at 9 o'clock on a Wednesday morning. Yeah. <laughs> I enjoy what I do and you have good days and bad days, but I think you have that in any job. But on a whole, I think I make a difference. I think I go to work and I do a good thing. And you definitely learn from experience. So I'm shiny and new, so I can learn off everybody else. Today, Jess is out with PC Mark Williams. They are call sign 9-1. 9 to 9 -1. Sergeant Lee Simons and PC Danny Morse are 9 0. Back at base, Chris Smyers on control, and cameras have just spotted a potentially dangerous driver. Intel that he frequently drives the white Safira whilst under the influence of drugs and alcohol. Yeah, Steve, is there any, uh, any other drugs intel on him? It says he supplies drugs, he is a drugs user. He uses between 700 and 1,000 pounds worth of cocaine per month. I see, thank you. Grand's worth of cocaine a month. Wow. Some heavy weekends he's having. There's not just one bit, there's a couple of bits of intelligence that he's a drug driver, drink driver, and obviously um, does deal and, and potentially use drugs. The car needs to be found. 9-0 and 9-1 take up the hunt as a pack. We are keeping our eyes peeled for a white Vauxhall Safira. It's got intelligence about drugs and it has hit a few cameras, should be coming into the town. So we're going to both do a couple of checks, different routes into the town that you can take and see if it comes up. If there's intel about um, users, hundreds of pounds worth of like cocaine a week, was it? A month, I think. A month. Yeah, a week would be a lot. As the newest member of the team, Jess is yet to make an arrest as a sentinel. If she can help to get a potential drug driver off the road, it'll be a good start. It's a drug driver who's potentially a drug dealer or so. And by our reckoning, he should be hitting a lot of stuff now. He lives in a lot of stuff. As luck would have it, 9-0 is in the right place at the right time. 
What's that? What's that? Can't Is that the one? See it. We've just seen a no, white sephira. We're not behind it, so we didn't see the index. We're now following it. We're two behind. Come and join you. While Mark gets behind the suspect... That's the one, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, this is the one. Lee floors it in the unmarked BMW to catch up, and Jess is first to make contact. Hello, you're right. Can you take the keys out? Take the keys out for me, Jess. Thank you. What's your name? It is the man they're after. We've got intelligence suggests you may be a cannabis user or co uh, cocaine user. Is it? Yeah, cannabis or cocaine user. No? Are you used either of them? No. Have you had any cannabis or cocaine in the last 24 hours? I just went to court, mate. <laughs> OK, what, for drugs? No. <laughs> it seems he's on his way home from court for an unrelated matter. Now Lee and Danny have arrived. They take the passenger, but he isn't very talkative and refuses to give them his name. Just take your details. No, don't ask you my details. I know you'll face them somewhere, don't I? Mr. Well, you're either him or his brother. So why wouldn't you give me your name? Oh, it's not against the law to give you my details, is it? It's not, no. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. Uh, but I'm just wondering what you're doing in this vehicle. With me? Yeah, doing what? Just come back from court with him. Court? You've yeah. been to court? Yeah, well, not, me. Court. not me. You've been to court, yeah. oh, OK. I've just come to help. I've just come with friends. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Jess, did you get the intel from the 3rd of October? No, sorry, go again that he is a drug user and also does use a substantial amount of cocaine. Yeah, received that, thank you. Back at the driver's door, the intelligence is enough for the Sentinels to administer a drug wipe. What I need you to do is roll your tongue around the inside of your mouth, OK, and hold your tongue out for us. Just a little bit further. The roadside test takes less than 10 minutes to develop. Enough time for Danny and Lee to see what they can find out from the passenger. Shot this dude. You're a shoplifter. You're three shoplifters. No. Come on, bro, you're calling me a shoplifter now? No. no, I'm saying you look like someone very similar. But you won't give me your details, will you? Yeah. Look at my trainers in there, but my guns are. You call me a shoplifter or something? Well, I don't know who you are, do I? You won't give me your details? I don't have to give you your details, but you know who I am, though, do you? No, I don't. You do, you just said my name, fam. Is that your name? Yeah, it's not my name, but the no, second you look... my name in it, though. The second one? Yeah. Which is, which you're is you're what? Making, I'm making graphy, I'll pee, fam, innit? Come on. Fam? What's that? Yeah, the passenger was, uh, was was calling me fam, which I, I thought was hysterical. That's, that's obviously a slang, isn't it? I'm not up with the, the, the modern-day slang of the, you know, the people on the street down with it and such. <laughs> where, where were you born? I'm just trying to work out your accent. Where do you think I sound? Where do I sound like I come from, bro? Well, I'd say, like, you're coming from a, a, a London... Uh, uh, council oh, estate. Yeah, Whereabouts, then? Cos I... I worked south for quite a while. Well, I'm North, North London work. Oh, right. They've learned he's a Londoner, but not much else. Now the results of the test are in. You want me to do the honour? Yeah, I was going to go positive cocaine. Mm -hmm. And it's a significant moment for Jess. Are you happy? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, Should we wait for the bit to run us whole length? That's minutes? fine, because it's, it's within. It's so done I can do it now. straight away, so. I had hoped it would be my first arrest. Um, I'm not drug wipe trained and only Mark is. So Mark has to say whether it's become back positive or not. So I was hoping that he wouldn't steal it. <laughs> and he was, he was kind. And the time is now 2.26, OK? I'm arresting you on suspicion of driving with excess drugs in your system. So you do not say anything. May harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned. So well, you may later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. I do, I will just place you into handcuffs. Thank you. Yeah. Just bring this one around this way. You've got the first name. Yeah. yeah. That is. That is. That's how his mate just referred to him. The driver has just inadvertently helped the Sentinels by using the mystery man's first name. If I get you to step out, my colleague will just give you a pat down before we pop you in our vehicles. With confirmation of who he is, intelligence comes in from control linking the passenger to drugs as well. March in relation to him and drug supply and search, that he's involved in drug dealing. Yeah, cheers, Chris. I only got half of that because we know we're searching him. Bit, bit aggy. You're received when you're ready. If you need anything else, let me know. Yeah, yeah cheers, mate. Okay, we've got intelligence 
that relates you and this gentleman um, to the use of uh, class A drugs. Okay, for that reason, I'm going to detain you. Okay, because of a search. Okay. I ain't driving. Okay, no, I'm not saying you are. Okay, I've been I'm saying there's intelligence. Nothing to do with drug driving. Excuse me, one second, mate. I'm going to go down here. Right? Yeah, I'm sure we'll do that, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're all right. Okay? He's all over it, that's why. Yeah, all fine. over it. That's why I don't need to. All right, oh, OK. It's come from a courtroom. <laughs> <laughs> the passenger's search is negative, but the driver is on his way to custody. What will the... What happens, we'll take up the custody. Yeah. There'll be a blood test, yeah. okay, and then you'll be released to uh, arrest for excess specified drugs rather than cocaine because the blood sample will test for more than just cocaine. It will test for up to 15 different samples. So that allows us to deal with any other samples that may come up in a blood test. You haven't took any cocaine today at all. <laughs> yesterday, yesterday, like, in the time, maybe, if okay. I... You just remind you that you are under caution, so anything you do say... Yeah, that's pretty... fine. I'll, I'll tell you I took it yesterday. Okay. I haven't took anything today. I'm right. certainly the London court show. <laughs> and I certainly don't drive while I take it. <laughs> that is a completely different world to me. I'd never think about us, oh, dinner time. So we do a line of cocaine. It's a completely different world. It seems allegedly driving under the influence isn't the only dangerous thing linked to this driver. Lee has made a discovery in the car. Mark. Hello. Oh, hello. OK. Yeah. Happy days. Control on doing. Go ahead. Uh, if you're aware, I've been arrested for uh, drug drive and cocaine. Also just found a uh, police, uh, in a, well, police style. And we're done. Police style what? Sorry, I did hear police style, but I missed the rest, boss. Sorry. That's it. Batten. Oh, good skills. Nice one. The driver's got an unconvincing excuse. That's, that, that's just a restaurant. I haven't ever used or anything like that. Literally. You're all, yeah, under arrest on suspicion of the uh, cocaine. Yeah. So you've been further arrested for possession of an offensive weapon. What, that's a weapon? Yeah. Searched the vehicle under Section 23 of the Misuse of Drugs Act. Found this extendable police button, which is uh, uh, an offensive weapon uh, in law. So he's also been arrested for that. The passenger was later allowed to go on his way. A landmark day for Jess, making her first arrest for the lowest off team. It is just Jess from Sentinel in lowest off here. We've got one detained for excess drugs driving and a possession of an offensive weapon if you're happy to accept. Guys, Mrs. Moon's only gone and done it again. Muffins today. Mm. Lovely. Muffins. Another day in Ipswich. Another set of treats for Sergeant Moon's elite Sentinel team. Oh, wow. Mmm. Really good. Delicious. Sorry, Dan. You shouldn't speak with your mouth full. You know that, don't you? And you shouldn't wear a hat inside either, Daniel. Um, what did your mother teach you any manners? <laughs> no, obviously not. Thank you very much, Mrs. Moon. She's. Very lucky. Muffins eaten, the Sentinels hit the road. Call sign 81 today is Dan and Sophie. Just to let you know we're free for any activations. Proceed. Sophie lets Control know they're good to go, but then Dan spots a car that doesn't look quite right. Good. Moving vehicle check, please. I'm on a blue Peugeot 207. Driver looked dishevelled, shall we say, and, you know, of a little bit of interest to us. So we conducted a check on the vehicle and it come back registered to well out of county. It was certainly a long way from home. Vehicle entered early hours of the morning, so six in the morning on Monday from uh, west of the county. Sam on control quickly provides a background check on the car and its driver using the police national computer. PNC, he is known, warning violent. Last arrest of 2018 for driving whilst disqualified and using the vehicle while uninsured. Lots of driving offences, aggravated twat, aggravated burglaries, all going back through the years. He's showing he's got 14 points on his licence. Okay. With a long rap sheet of priors, Sophie and Dan decide to stop the driver. Sure, you've got that. We 
we have got a near side indication into Street. Is that like? Can you find the stop? Oh, he's belted. Right just stay there a second. Sit back in the car. When someone's like really hasty to get out the car and get that door closed, you think, well, is there something in there you don't want us to see or smell? Absolutely stinks of cannabis in this car. All right, so this moment in time, you're going to be detained for purpose of section three. Good, Mr. Dog, that search. Have you got anything on you you shouldn't have? Anything in the car? Probably a couple of slips in the grinder or something. There's the other car available to join us. Um, just stinks of cannabis in this car. Yeah, Woody's just popped to the toilet quickly. What's your location? Bloody Woody. We're outside the... Uh, let me just see <coughs> the road. As they wait for Woody and Sam Maples, call sign A2, Dan searches the suspect. Right, is there anything on your person which you should know? No. Any sharps or anything like that? Okay. Underneath the seat, there's two, there's two talks, but I literally just started the last split about 10 minutes ago. Okay. Now, I remind you, you are on course at the minute, so yeah, there's yeah. two tubs underneath the seat, and you've had a split about 10 minutes ago. Yeah. Is that right? Okay. He was so open and honest about, yeah, I'm a cannabis user. I had a joint 10 minutes ago. Then he tries to explain why he didn't stop immediately. I'm literally working there. Yeah, I was sitting there. Now. But if you'd have stopped when we first asked you to, down there, you'd been Because you had your indicator to pull over, I thought you was mm. put your lights on and was pulling left at the mm. thing. I didn't realise you were pulling me over until you'd come round the roundabout and you still had your indicator yeah. on. Well, we're only here because it's where you stopped. Woody and Sam Maples have arrived on the scene. With the man admitting to carrying drugs, they need to help search the car. So you've told us about these two pots. You've mentioned some slips. Where are they? I said they were was in there. I thought, or in the bottom of the grinder. In the middle. And that was literally that was the last one about 10 minutes ago. So you don't know if there is actually any cannabis in the car or not? To my knowledge, no. Because I've I just had my last one. Now, I've, I've only got them two tubs on there. I'm working away. I'm from Nottingham. So I've been a bit of weed because I smoke weed constantly. I have done since I was a young kid. I'm just a lad working away that smokes weed. And that's all. So, okay. so you're really, a professional I cannabis love, smoker, I is that right? Cannabis. I don't really do anything else. I used to be an heroin addict, and now I've been clean for two years. I just work and smoke weed, and that's all I do. I don't think he really saw the big problem in being a huge cannabis fan and, uh, you know, daily cannabis user of quite a significant quantity. This is a tub here with a bit of herbal in like that. Eight, one, for control. Good. Drug wipe is authorised. Receive that. There are now grounds to test the driver for drug use. Because of your emissions around, you've just smoked cannabis about 10 minutes ago. And obviously, we've found some yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to require you to provide a specimen yeah, of saliva yeah, or a yeah, drop yeah. Failure or refusal to yeah. do so is an offence which you may be prosecuted yeah, yeah, for, yeah, all right? Yeah. You happy to provide a yeah. sample? Yeah, don't do nothing. To Have me. you done it's one like of these like tests smoking before? Smoking weed is like, smoke that much of it, it's like smoking a cigarette to anybody else. It doesn't, okay. it doesn't affect me like it does anything. Yeah, I've done one of them before. Yeah. You've done one of these tests before. Okay, so you know. Yeah, no, I know, I know. You've got so you, just need to, right. you just need to build up some saliva in your mouth, okay? And then pop your tongue out for me. The test detects drugs in the system including cannabis and cocaine. But even if it's positive, the man will need further blood tests to confirm the results. The Sentinels also find a prescription drug, often used in treatments to kick heroin. I've got a subtext script and I'm on that, and that's a tablet book in the middle. You okay. see Have you got a copy of that script I, I don't carry my prescriptions. You don't need to swear, do you? Sorry, but I don't. And do you carry your prescriptions? Have you got, the, bo have have you got the box that they're uh, coming, so we've got it with your name on? It's not illegal medication anyway, so you can't just take it off there. It's a controlled substance, it needs to be prescribed to you though, doesn't it? It is prescribed to me. Okay. Yeah, but we need I'm to... I'm not lying to you about anything, anything have I? If medication hasn't got, you know, a prescription name on it and it's not boxed up, then we'll always, you know, look to make those inquiries, whether that be at the roadside or in custody with the medic, as to whether they are entitled to that prescription, because ultimately they're all controlled drugs and they're controlled drugs for a reason. Stand up against him. I'm just checking what he's doing. Well, he's taking it out so he can search it, isn't he? Yeah, I'm asking you to. Just stand up. It's easy, isn't it? We're calling this. Get on with what he's doing there. You're in the way. You can pin me up against. No, because you're in the way. I'm not. I don't want to hear that language. 
A significant amount of cannabis has been found. So the team need to work out if this man is a serious cannabis smoker. Well, I'm not smoke for the rest of the week. Oh, yeah. Or a professional dealer. Quite some stunts, right? Yeah, they're doing. There's also two of these empty as well. Is there anything around intel wise around supply? He's got one phone on him, isn't he? He's got one phone. There's no other evidence of. No little bags or anything yeah, like no that. No little bags. There's obviously the two other ones of these, which are slightly smaller. Dealer or no dealer, the results of the drug wipe are in. It's 11.38, all right, at this moment in time, I'm going to be arresting you. Personally, on suspicion of driving a motor vehicle while succeeding a specified limit of a specified drug. Have I come back with a veil on that? Then? Yes, tested positive for cannabis, all right. And secondly, on possession with intention to supply. Class B cannabis, both on the quantity that was located in the vehicle. Oh, Still remain under caution, so you do not have to say anything, but it may help with defence, do not mention when questioned, something which is later on in court. Anything you do I'm say aware, may man. be given in evidence, all right? Do you honestly you believe that? Uh, I mean, to okay. intent to supply drugs? Is that what you... Due to the sheer amount of cannabis found, the Sentinels have decided there's enough evidence to suspect the man could be dealing. Not that he agrees. It doesn't take Sherlock Holmes to work out what I'm actually doing, does it? I just want to... Oh, I'll stop talking to me, please. The man is taken to custody to be interviewed and undergo blood tests. So he's been arrested for um, possession of intent to supply Class B cannabis due to the quantity located in the numerous tubs and then also for drug driving because he's tested positive for cannabis. At the time of filming, the man was still awaiting test results for drug driving. He was given a caution for the cannabis possession. It's, it's just one of those sort of Policeman knows as if you like, and a little bit of gut instinct and intuition. Another day keeping the streets of Suffolk safe. I just want to put something back into society. You know, when you go home at the end of the day, you've achieved something, you've done something good. Another potentially dangerous driver off the roads. Something you can be proud of, and you know, hopefully, you know, in years to come, I can sort of, you know, retire and kick back, relax, and say, yeah, I've done my bit. <laughs>